Hello. In today's presentation, I'll be showing you how to record an action. An action is a set of pre-recorded steps in Photoshop that then can be played back on one image or a folder containing many, many images, providing a great savings in time when doing repetitive kinds of functions. To begin with, we first need to be able to see our actions panel. If you're not seeing it in your workspace, go up to Window, click on Actions. You should then be able to see the Actions panel. Also, depending upon your configuration, you may or may not see all of these different groups of actions. For example, in the default actions, which normally will be there, these are all the different actions that are available. These other ones, such as frames, image effects, production, text effects, video actions, you may or may not be seeing. If you do not see these and want access, go to the upper right corner of the action panel, click, and here's where you will see those. Frames, image effects, production, text effects, textures, video actions, for example. You would simply click on those and then those would load into the actions panel. All right, so again, these are a number of uh, pre-recorded actions. To give you an idea how they function, let me go ahead and open up an image. We'll go ahead and choose that one. And let's say that I want to perform a, an action that does something like a sepia tone. I would select the action by clicking on the word part of the action. Don't click on the arrow or off to the side. I would then go down to the bottom and click on the play button. And it then goes through a number of steps. In this case, to do a sepia tone it took one, two, three, four, five steps. And so it makes it look like a sepia tone. If I wanted to make a wood frame, I would click on that. And not all actions will work on all objects. Not all actions will work with the different sizes that you have. This is one that will probably come up with a message. Let's see. Yes. Reminding us that we have to have a minimum of 100 pixels wide. Let me go ahead and continue. It will go through a number of steps, creating what is supposed to look like a wood frame. And so you can see how we can play an action. We simply select it, come down below, and click on play. Let's say that I want to create my own action. So what I would do is I would, I'm going to go ahead and close this one here. I would go and pick a folder that I would like to place it into, let's say default actions. I would come down to the bottom and on the icon immediately left of the garbage can, I would click on that. That is to create a new action as you can see with the little tip. And I would give it a name. And let's say this is my favorite action. I'd be more descriptive depending upon what I was going to do in this action, but we'll just call it that for now. And I can select where it's going to be stored. I've already picked the default actions as that. I can change some other things dealing with function, key, and color. I'm just going to leave it. Well, when I hit record, you'll see that we are now in a record mode. Whatever I do will be recorded to this action. Maybe I want, as a part of this action, to record doing a sepia tone. I would select the action, again clicking on the text, clicking on play. So now what I'm doing is recording that I am playing this specific action. And you'll see, here's my favorite action. As a part of that action, the very first thing is to pl play the action called sepia tone. Now, we don't have to play actions within an action. We can certainly do that. We can do as many as we want. But I could also do something like apply a filter. So I come up to filter, I'm still in a recording mode. And I could do a, let's try a, let's go to filter gallery, see what I have there. Let's go to artistic. Maybe I want a film grain. Oh, now, again, I said not all um, actions do things differently. In this particular case, the filter will not work because the layer that I have selected is a layer that is just white. So if I was going to do a layer, I'd have to make sure that I pick the appropriate uh, filter is going to pick the appropriate layer. Uh, so let's do something different. Let's go ahead and instead of applying a filter at this time to our action, notice we're still in the record mode, let's say that I'm going to change the size. I'll go to image size and maybe I want to make this image, oh let's say 1600 pixels wide. I'm going to leave it constrained, click on OK and I've recorded 
that I have made that image a different size. All right. Uh, again, we can do anything we can do in Photoshop. We could record for the most part. So we would continue going on, recording whatever steps that we wanted. Those would continue to be added in here. Whenever we're done, we would simply hit the stop. I mentioned in this case the filter wasn't going to work because I had done it after my play action. And that then ended up being on a white layer. Anything in these actions can be moved around just like with layers. So I can click and hold and drag it to a new location. So in this case my filter would be applied first before my sepia toning and then my image size. I can also delete things. So maybe I don't want that filter gallery uh, step to be in there. I could go ahead and delete it using the trash can. That step is then removed. I could also temporarily disable a step by using the check mark next to it. So if I only wanted to run one step, in my case one step, the sepia toning, I could do that if I want to do both and make sure both are selected. Uh, stay away from this other column. This determines whether or not a dialog box will appear. In most cases, leave it as it is and it'll be fine. All right, but let's say you forget to do something. You've added these two steps and actually you need a third step recorded in here. What you can do is still record once you've stopped. Pick where you want to start recording. Click on record and then simply record what you want to do. So maybe for some reason in this one I am going to do image and let's do edit actually. Let's do image. Yeah, let's do image rotate and we're going to turn it upside down. You'll see that it has recorded that as one of the steps. If that's all I needed to do, I was hitting stop. And now I have three steps in my action. All right, let's say we're done. I'm just going to close this, but I'm not going to save it. I'm going to go ahead and just for test purposes, reopen it. Click on my favorite action. And then I will click on play, just like we're playing any other one. So we should end up with it having a sepia tone, image size being changed, and it was rotated. And I did not have to do those steps individually. Now, if I'm going to include in this action, actually, let me redo that. Let's say that I am going to, as a part of this action, I also want to save. I can do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on my last step in my action. I'm going to tell it to record. And I'm going to come up. I'm going to do a file, save as. And let's say that I am going to save this as not a PSD, but maybe I need it as a bitmap, JPEG, whatever file format I would like. I'm going to leave the name alone, click on save, pick my appropriate options. And even the save then has been recorded as part of that action. Oftentimes, too, we're going to want to close. I don't want to overwrite my original because I've made a bitmap copy. And so that also is a part of that action. So now, if I were to open an image, let's pick uh, the original. If I run this action, it will not only do the sepia toning, not only the image size, rotating, it'll save it as a bitmap and then close the image. So we'll see all those steps occur. And then it looked like it disappeared. It disappeared because it saved it and closed it, all a part of that action. All right, that concludes on how to record an action in Photoshop.